coming up on the Lifestyle.org podcast. Your brain has two hemispheres, but it only has one brain stem to which both hemispheres are connected. Hmm. And what that means is you can really only intensely concentrate on one thing at a time, period. Even with a male, they can be so intensely interested in this conversation that they'll miss something until it's too late. I'm here with Dr. Arlene Taylor, brain specialist. Uh, I want to talk to you uh, specifically about this thing called inattentional blindness. Um, what is that? <laughs> it's a big problem. That's what it is. Yeah. Your brain has two hemispheres, but it only has one brain stem to which both hemispheres are connected. And what that means is you can really only intensely concentrate on one thing at a time, period. Yeah. So, and, and that's, I've, I've heard women are network processors, men are compartmental, and I've known men can only think about one thing at a time. In fact, we have the gift of not thinking about anything at a given time. I admire that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, we're thinking about nothing. Um, but regardless of the traditional general women's yeah, or but men's you're brain, talking it's about, just... You're talking about two different things. Right. You're talking about the male brain, and I admire it. It's almost, the corpus callosum is thinner with fewer uh, axons, mm -hmm. which means they have somewhat independently operating hemispheres, and I really admire that, meaning they can be doing something with one hemisphere, if what they're also doing comes out of the other hemisphere, they can simultaneously do both. Women cannot do both because hmm. their brains are like a trunk. Yeah. Everything just gets dumped in. And, you know, metaphorically, a woman can go to a real trunk and she's looking for a certificate and she's plowing through everything in there. And, oh, I, f I remember when that happened. And now she stops to think about that, and then mm -hmm. she sees something else, and eventually she goes, now what was I wanting? <laughs> you know, so yeah. that's a whole separate kind of thing from yeah. inattentional blindness. So there's been a couple of really interesting studies done on intentional blindness. One of them involved a, a person dressed up as a bear, mm -hmm. and one involved a person dressed up as a gorilla. And there's a whole book written on that, I'm sure, that you have heard of. So they're having this really exciting playoff basketball game. Hmm. And they've got everybody there rooting for their team. And it's exciting. And they're glued. And, you know, a bomb could drop behind them. And they wouldn't even hear. Yeah. And then they have this bear walk across the basketball court. And they have a gorilla walk across the basketball court. And then after the game is done, they say, how many of you saw the gorilla? And they go, what? <laughs> and it's almost zero sometimes. Really? Nobody saw the gorilla. Nobody saw the bear because they were so intensely geared to the game. Well, yeah. that's the science behind using a cell phone when you drive. Hmm. Because now you're concentrating on the conversation. Yeah. And, you know, for a male... He can be listening with, you know, the the left lower lobe of the brain where mm -hmm. Wernicke's is. And he can be sort of driving with the frontal right. Mm -hmm. But that's very hard for women to do because remember, we're in a trunk. Yeah. And even with a male, they can be so intensely interested in this conversation that they'll miss something until it's too late. They'll miss seeing the bicyclist. They're missing mm -hmm. the... The person on the, you know, can't even think of the name. Harley Davidson. Yeah, motorcycle. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. They'll, they'll miss it. Yeah. Because they were so intensely focusing on something. Or there'll be a family and there'll be three kids in the back and they're acting up. So the driver turns around to whack one of them and tell them <laughs> to shut up and runs into somebody. Because, yeah. you know. I've heard the brain is 
is like a great filter because you're getting millions and billions of bits of input and the brain decides what's important. The brain decides what, what to see. And I had a friend talk to me uh, years ago. He calls it the U-Haul effect where he, he broke down in a U-Haul moving. Mm. And from then on, he had never seen a broken down U-Haul before. Now left and right, all he sees on the road, broken down U-Hauls. <laughs> and it was like his brain said, now you can see these things. Mm -hmm. Is that is that part of the, you know, in uh, attentional blindness? Is this, what what is going on in, in our brain to say, pay attention to this, don't pay attention to that? You know, that's a pretty complex question, but you only know what you know. And mm. so every time you learn something, now your conscious brain and your subconscious have new information. Yeah. And they will orchestrate your life differently. Mm. And it's it's learning. I mean, if you don't, if you've never seen something before, I know there's stories about when the Europeans came to America for the first time in this huge ship. The Native Americans had never seen a ship and they didn't recognize it until they were put in a canoe and driven out to the ship and they toured the ship. When they went back to the land, they said, oh, we see that. So they couldn't they couldn't actually even see it. They could before. not see it because they'd never seen it before. And they didn't know, you know, is it a cloud? What is it? They did not identify it as this huge ship. Wow. So that's partly the value of learning. Mm -hmm. Because the more you experience, especially in a healthy way, the more you see. Hmm. But inattentional blindness is choosing to focus on something so exciting mm -hmm. that it pulls all of your you know, the baby's crying and you're not hearing a thing and she and she's off shopping and you were supposed to be watching the kid. <laughs> you know, you don't even hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so intense. So understanding this, you know, is, is something that we have to deal with. What in what ways is this something that can help us? And in what ways is this something that we need to make sure that we don't let it hurt us in in, in daily life? You mean don't let it hurt you because you are so involved, you miss other things? Yeah, and and it, is it beneficial at all to, to understand that your brain does this? Well, I think so. Yeah. I, I definitely think so. For example, every morning I personally read scripture mm -hmm. and I'm reading the book of Job now. Mm -hmm. And that is a trip. Yeah. I am in my room with the door closed. There's no music playing. I'm not thinking about, you know, when I'm done with this, what am I going to eat for breakfast? I'm reading out loud so that all my faculties, sight, sound, you know, mouth, voice box, teeth, are concentrated on, on reading this. Yeah. And I'm a preacher's kid hmm. and I'm reading stuff I never heard before yeah I'm sure it wasn't there when I was a kid <laughs> <laughs> and that allows me to set up the environment in a way that I can maximize what it is I need and want to do at the moment yeah and when I'm driving I'm rarely on the rarely on it's got to be an emergency otherwise I let it go to voicemail and when I pull over for gas I check my hmm. check my phone yeah. Because it's so easy, especially for a female. If it's a friend who's sobbing because they're having trouble and now you are concentrating on how can you help them, I tell them, give me 15 minutes, I'll call you back. Hmm. Because I have been doing that and almost missed crashing two or three times and I thought this is not worth it. Yeah. You know, 30 years ago, we didn't even have that option. Yeah. And just because we have the technology, is it wise to use it every day? And all the time. And all the time. 